If you have benefited from resources produced by G3 Ministries, would you consider donating to support us? Even a few dollars helps us to continue to publish free curricula, articles, podcasts, video resources, and more. Visit g3min.org give or open the G3 app to give a one-time or monthly donation. Articles from G3 Ministries John Gill and the Great Prostitute Written by Chipley McQueen Thornton Revelation 17, verse 3 Quote And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. End quote. To John Gill, nearly everything wicked goes back to the popes. The pope controls the church in Rome. The church, in turn, exercises great influence over the city of Rome. Rome, in John's day, held jurisdiction over most of the kings of the earth. It all traces back to the papal power. Revelation 17 depicts, number one, a great prostitute seated over the nations, and number two, a woman riding a beast. Both appear to be working in concert and, in Gill's view, at the Pope's direction. Chapter 17 draws out some of the themes first introduced in chapters 12 and 13, which I will spell out below. But first, who is the great prostitute? Who is the woman? And who is the beast? The Great Prostitute Gill states the great prostitute is, quote, no other than Rome papal, end quote, meaning the Pope's ecclesiastical influence. That whole system adorned itself in gaudy apparel, which corresponds to the, quote, external luster and splendor of the worship of the Church of Rome, end quote. Yet the inside was full of dead men's bones, spiritually. Worse, she martyred those who rejected her prostitutions and remained faithful to God. Remember, Gill's generation was only a few years removed from the Roman Church's sanction and execution of untold thousands of murders. In his words, quote, bloodthirstiness, butcheries, and burnings, end quote. The Woman and the Beast Gill believes the woman on the beast is the Roman Catholic Church. The beast is in this instance, specifically refers to the Pope's civil influence over the church. Due to the church-state union at the time, this influence is extended into society as well. He states, quote, The woman designs the Romish church with the Pope at the head of it and the beast, the Roman papal empire as civil by which the former is supported and upheld, end quote. This picks up on the two beasts from Revelation 13, verse 1, which is really one beast with two arms, an ecclesiastical arm and a civil arm. Revelation 17 speaks of the civil branch as indicated by the seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads seven kings, and ten horns. These symbolic references are also mentioned in Revelation 12, verse 3. The seven heads represent the city of Rome, which was built upon seven mountains. Revelation 17, verse 10 says, this also signifies seven kings. These kings, says Gill, preside over seven forms of government. Number one, kings. Number two, consuls. Number three, dictators. Number four, uh, decemvirs. Number five, tribunes. Number six, emperors. And number seven, popes. 
Of course, an eighth and final head emerges from the seventh. They are one and the same, namely, the popes of Rome. As such, the popes, who historically have always been lurking in the background, begin to take center stage in the final days. The ten horns represent the Roman Empire once it was split into ten kingdoms, beginning around 455 A.D. Gill offers several options on the identity of these kingdoms. There is no unanimity among scholars, and Gill leaves it to the reader to decide. The beast who was, is not, but will be. Revelation 17, 8 states the beast, quote, was, is not, and is about to rise, end quote. This harkens back to Revelation 13, verse 2, when the beast was mortally wounded. Gill states the beast who was loosely signifies the Roman Empire when the emperor and pope were in lockstep. The mortal wound occurred in 476 A.D. when the Roman emperor Augustulus quit and Rome's power was weakened. This prophecy envisions a day when the pope accumulates total power unto himself and the emperor and the kings under him serves his pleasure in the final days. The beast will rise in full power in those days with the Roman Catholic Church riding the civil state system and exercising dominance over the nations. Reflections As mentioned, we all are influenced by the times in which we live. For instance, the Eagles recorded a hit song in 1977 that went to number one, Hotel California. One of the writers, Don Henley, said the Hotel California in the song was emblematic of, quote, American culture in general, end quote. That is, America's lust-filled world system, driven by sex, greed, materialism, and self-idolatry. The hotel seems so beautiful in its outward appearance, but it's all a facade. Once in it, each person becomes enslaved by their own desires. One verse of that song says, quote, Mirrors on the ceiling, the pink champagne on ice. And she said, We are all just prisoners here of our own device. And in the master's chambers they gathered for the feast. They stab it with their steely knives but they just can't kill the beast. End quote. The closing verse goes like this. Quote, the last thing I remember was running for the door. I had to find the passage back to the place I was before. Relax, said the night man. We are programmed to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. End quote. Henley and the other writers were no theologians. However, some theologians today do feel like the beast is Satan's world system. Hotel California. Gill felt like it was the wicked Catholic system, ecclesiastical and civil. I suppose some today will suggest social media is the beast. Again, we are all products of our own times. Who knows what beast might arise in the future, should the Lord tarry. I don't discount the idea that the Pope could rise to accumulate total power, as Gill suggests. But I can't limit it to that idea either. My mind remains open because Revelation 17 verse 9 tells me, quote, This calls... For a mind of wisdom. End quote. 